Hi, I'm James Catherall, founder of Catherall Audio. So, Apple just had an event this past Tuesday in which they announced a whole slew of new stuff, including Logic Pro 2 for the iPad and Logic Pro 11 for the Mac lineup. Introducing Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro 2. Now, I'm mostly gonna focus on Logic Pro 11 for this video. I'll get into all the big features that have been announced so far, but first, let's talk about the naming. It feels important to pay attention to because Apple has officially branded it as version 11. For a quick bit of history, we've been on version 10 since July 16th of 2013. So that's close to 11 years, which adds a bit of weight to all the things that would come with this update. For context, macOS 10 was released on March 24th of 2001, which was called Cheetah, and that lasted all the way until November 12th of 2020 when they released Big Sur and officially branded it as macOS 11 that went along with the switch to the in-house Apple Silicon chips. Something else that's pretty big with this update. It seems to squash the rumors that Apple was going to make the desktop version of Logic Pro a subscription, at least for now. In the fine print of the press release, they've announced that this will be a free update for existing users and will still be listed at the absolute steal of a price of $199.99. That's not to say that it'll never happen down the road, but we can at least relax for a while that it's not coming anytime soon. Now, let's talk about the major features they've announced. Apple is absolutely taking advantage of the current AI trend and have filled their announcements with AI buzzwords. In this super short press release that's no more than seven or eight paragraphs long, they've referenced the word AI eight times. So anyway, back to the actual features that have been announced. First up is Session Players, which at its essence is an expansion of the drummer feature that's been in Logic Pro since version 10. It's been highly praised and offered a lot of assistance to hobbyists and newer producers that don't have the resources and space to be able to record a real live drummer. They've now added a bass player and a keyboard player. Much like the drummers, you'll be able to choose from different players and styles to complement the track that you're creating. Now you can essentially have a band in a box to use at your disposal. This was also accompanied by some smaller announcements. These players will utilize two new plugins, Studio Bass and Studio Piano. So now outside of all these AI studio players, you'll be able to utilize these plugins on your tracks, which seems to be in line with their other series of studio plugins, which includes the studio horns and studio strings. The other announcement that was squeezed in this larger announcement is the addition of a chord track in your projects. This has been added to the global tracks area along with the tempo and track markers and all those other things up there. It'll allow you to create a defined chord progression that these session players can follow and can give you an easy and quick way to follow the structure of the chords in your track. Next is Chroma Glow. This at its heart appears to be a new distortion and saturation type of plugin. It'll have different presets that can model the highly sought after warmth of analog type gear and give your tracks more color and character. This is a great addition that seems pretty long overdue as a stock Logic plugin. Before this, you had to utilize tricks like adding the tape delay plugin and pulling the delay all the way down to nothing and mixing in the wet signal to taste to add some of that analog warmth to a specific track. So it's great that we'll finally have a true dedicated plugin for this type of sound. And then saving the best for last is the stem splitter. Based on all the posts I've been reading, this one seems to be creating the most buzz for this update. The stem splitter can take an audio file of a song and split it into four separate tracks, vocals, drums, bass, and other, which kind of seems like a whole collection of stuff, maybe like, percussion and piano and guitar, which is a little bit of a bummer just because it'd be really awesome if it could separate the piano and the guitar as well. But hopefully that'll come in a later iteration of the stem splitter. So this is a huge feature that will now come stock with Logic Pro 11. This isn't something that's brand new. There are a few websites and apps that have offered this feature for a while now, but I'm excited because Apple's philosophy is to only add features when they feel like they can do something truly great with it. You know, there's some things that we we have not done because we to do it, we would want to do something really distinctly great in that space. Especially when it's something that already exists like stem splitters. They have a strong track record of not being the first to release something, but to be one of the best when they do put it out publicly. 
So that makes me excited about the potential of this feature because the algorithms that most other companies have used for this type of application have left a lot to be desired in my opinion. It can be really hit or miss depending on the genre and quality of recording that you're feeding into it. I'm really excited to dig into it more, so make sure you're subscribed because I'll absolutely be dropping a deep dive video on all of this as soon as it's released on May 13th. Lastly, it's important to look at the fine print at the bottom of the press release, because this is where some of the unfortunate news is listed. The session player is currently listed as recommending the M-series Apple Silicon for its usage, while the stem splitter and Chroma Glow require the M-series Apple Silicon. This means that Intel Max will only have access to the session player's feature. And as a whole, the Logic Pro 11 update will require macOS Ventura 13.5 or later which is supported as far back as 2017 MacBook Pros. It'll still mean that you'll have to update the operating system if you're currently running on anything older than that. Which, if you haven't purchased an M-series computer because of costs, totally get it. But if there's anything else holding you back, it's well worth it to get an M-series Mac now. They've been out for about three and a half years and they've proved to be nothing short of revolutionary to the world of computer processors. Logic Pro is scheduled to release on Monday, May 13th. We don't know a whole lot yet outside of the brief portion of the Apple event and this short press release. They don't have any type of release notes yet on this update, and that'll give us a lot more information as soon as we get that. But I'll absolutely be downloading it the moment I'm able to, so make sure you get subscribed so you can get all the details on it as soon as I'm able to check it out. That's it for this video. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.